This is the Note Closer Show, where you get the latest developments in distressed note investing and learn the secrets of how you can control millions of dollars worth of property for pennies on the dollar. Get educated and entertained by someone who has closed thousands of deals and lives to support you in achieving the same. Now, here's your host, CEO of We Close Notes, Scott Carson. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closure Show. As always, Scott Carson, excited to be here with you today. Uh, and I'm really excited at our special guest who has done some amazing things for entrepreneurs out there. And I think you guys are going to get a lot from this episode. Uh, the man I'm talking about has been a buddy of mine for a while. We both met at PodFest, uh, I think originally a few years back, and, and, and networked in different groups and hadn't really connected that much. And then we reached out after the most recent PodFest. And uh, got a chance to kind of connect and talk a little bit and realize, hey, I need to have him on the show for you guys out there. So many of you guys know that we do a lot with marketing. It's one, I think one of the things that separates us. And I think one of the most powerful things that you will develop as an entrepreneur, whether you're branding or seasoned, is your branding, is, is your personal brand and what you're focused on. And so our special guest today is, he's, he's kind of across the country, is Coach Chris, he's the host of the Personal Branding Playbook and creator of the Milestone System. Uh, he's been podcasting and developing brands for six plus years and is speaking around the world and growing businesses to the next level. And I know that many of you guys that are listening to this, many uh, guys and gals, are going through transitions. Either A, you're still working full time and trying to do something on a part time basis, or your, 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 your side hustle is be, you're trying to get that to be your main hustle. And Chris is an expert at really helping people identify their brand and allowing people to kind of identify that so it becomes something more than just, hey, Joe Schmo out there pitching notes or trying to raise capital. So uh, he's worked with so many business owners and, and, and companies out there about growing their brand. So Chris, Coach Chris, man, we are honored to have you on the Note Closure Show today, buddy. Man, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that intro. That was fancy. I like that. You like that? You know, I, I, I like to let, make sure that my audience knows what we're going to be discussing. There's nothing worse than an episode that drags on for 10 to 15 minutes and you can't figure out what the heck are they going to talk about, right, Chris? <laughs> yeah, I, man, I definitely agree. Um, and uh, that, that right there is a small intro to branding, that right there, just that small piece. Um, so I'm excited to be here, man. I love these kind of shows. And it was fun meeting so many podcasters that I've known online in person back in March, right before COVID shut everything down. I feel like we got lucky. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in that, that we did get lucky. Um, you know, I had some people that I was there and they were like caught a cold from there. Like, oh, I caught the COVID. I'm like, you don't have that COVID. Come on now. <laughs> you know, you're, you're young, you get strong. But that's, that's the thing is if you want to hone a craft, no matter what it is, whether it's real estate, podcasting, selling tiddlywinks, or do one fix and flips, whatever it might be, you got to start building a brand. I mean, you have to look at Nike, you look at McDonald's, you look at Starbucks, you know, all you got to do is show a logo and it kind of identifies with it. And we've done really well with our brand at, at uh, NCS here. And then we close notes that people recognize. I literally have banks that say me and asset managers that tell me, Oh yeah, I look for the green email when I'm looking for your emails. I'm like, Branding at its best there for you. So. Oh man, that is beautiful with the green. Oh, that we're at. people ask me why I cho chose the burgundy with the kind of the dirty old gold for my brand, and that's because it stands out. You know, uh, like when you see that, it's a different approach. It's not the same bland, like maybe the blue or something like that. I wanted something that really pops at you. Exactly. So before we dive into that, why don't you share a little bit about your background, how you got into what you're doing now for the last six years, and, and all your background so our audience can. Uh, can understand where you're kind of coming from and add value to it. First of all, I want to be clear. Uh, my name, Coach Chris, actually comes from me being a basketball coach. So before I got into podcasting or business, anything, I was Coach Chris on the court. Um, at one point in time, I was a trainer. I was a player. I was a writer. I did everything. My whole life was basketball. And that's what led to me being a podcast host. Like, my first time being on a podcast, I will never forget it. Um, I was just on NBA Twitter having a conversation back and forth. And the guy's like, hey, I love your conversation here. Do you want to come on my show? I'm like, sure. So he calls me, and I didn't know we were live. We were <laughs> live. <laughs> so I had to run into my closet, and I'm like in my closet, and he's asking me questions. We're having a conversation back and forth. 
And it was just exhilarating for me. And when I went on Twitter, people were like, oh, my God, I loved it. And I'm like, wait, when does this come out? And he's like, oh, we were live. <laughs> so that was my introduction to podcasting. Um, I actually dove deeper into podcasting after I went through some tough times in my life. You know, I got evicted from my apartment. I lost all three of my jobs at like in one week. Oh. And uh, I got my car repo in the same week. So it was just a crazy, crazy time that led to me writing my first book and really digging deeper on my, hosting my shows. Um, so I spent some time as an editor as well. Then I started my own network. That was super fun, but way too fast. <laughs> we had 12 shows, 30 plus sponsors. It was an amazing experience. Um, so I made thousands of dollars with the sponsorship side. Now I just do business. Um, I just help other people with their shows. And it is fun for me, man. I, I love this. That's, that's great stuff. We're going to have to come back to that quintuple of shit happening all in the same week. <laughs> Three job losses, getting evicted, and then car repo. Because we know there's a lot of people that are going through tough times right now, especially in with what's going on in the country. So we'll get to that in a second. But let's talk about some of the biggest mistakes. What's, let's, let's start with the positive side of things. What are the one thing that just drives you ape shit when you're dealing with businesses that you see uh, business owners and entrepreneurs making over and over again with their, with their branding or building a brand, Chris? What's the biggest thing that you see that you're like, oh, this is so easily to fix if you would just take a few time, a few minutes to do it? I, I think my biggest pet peeve is when people go and make like social media accounts for their brand. And it's like, you don't have a website, you don't have a message, you have, you have not completed a customer avatar breakdown yet you have all these social profiles up or, or my, you know, actually this is my biggest. I changed my mind. <laughs> we got them off and rolling everybody. <laughs> when people spend money on logos and they have not built their company yet, the logo, I promise you it's, it's important, but what's more important is actually the colors of the logo. Mm -hmm. I didn't have my first logo until this year and I've been in business for six years. So the logo isn't going to be a make or break. If you can solve somebody's problem, they're going to pay you whether they like your logo or not. The logo is just the visual branding. And I think people focus too much on visual branding instead of the branding that actually matters. Mm -hmm. You know, I often compare it um, to people making a to-do list and then checking off the little things where the, where the actual difficult things for the most of the big rocks aspect of things. So you mentioned a couple of things. I want to come back to that right now is you said people are doing these things without knowing their, their client avatar, their customer avatar. Let's talk a little bit about that and some of the things that people can do to identify who their real ideal client is and where they're hanging out with. Because we all know that's important. Having a social media account is great, but if they're not hanging out there, it's a waste of time, right? And that's the first step is when you fill out that customer avatar, it used to be for like demographic and age and all that stuff. But I think because everything is such, such an online world now, the first step should be you breaking down and understanding where your ideal customer is online. It doesn't matter how great your Facebook profile looks if you're trying to market to teenagers because they don't use Facebook. They're on TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram and maybe Twitter, but they're not on Facebook a lot. Um, I know a lot of people that put too much energy into that. You know, um, So when you're trying to set up that customer avatar, you need to focus on those key elements. The After you find out what platform they're on, my next step is what is the biggest problem that they're facing that I can solve? What is the biggest problem? Because if you choose a small problem, then that's not going to be a pressing issue that they want to pay to be solved. Whereas if you choose a big problem that a lot of people have, you can make a lot more money and a lot more impact. So for me, my custom, I know it's the traditional customer avatar is the age, the location, the gender and all that stuff. I like to go for the bigger picture. So what platform are they on? What problems do they have? And then you want to go into, this is the third one, the influencers. Who are they following online? What content are they consuming? Because then you know you can either target them using ads, you can start creating light content to really drag in their audience, or if you have a podcast like us two geniuses, you can bring those influencers on your show. So those are my three ways that I start really uh, setting up a brand to attract more customers. It's not; it's more new. It's really kind of getting away from the traditional style. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you hit, I think you hit the nail right in the head there, Chris, uh, talking about, yeah, everybody worries about the age, you know, age, where they live, college educated, how much are they making per year? I mean, that's important specifically if you're, depending on what you're marketing, especially what type of product, if you've got a higher end product and your people are making like below minimum wage, that's not a good fit for the most part, right? 
So you got to understand where they're at. And then hanging out, like you said, is one of the most important things. Um, people always ask me like, Scott, why don't you do more with your Instagram? Like, I'm like, cause my clients aren't there. I have a, I got something up there that I just wrote for the podcast, but it doesn't really drive me any business. I spend more time on LinkedIn and email and go yeah. that route, you know? And, and what I tell people too, is when you figure out the platforms they're on, your business should be focused on two major platforms. Because if you don't have a, most of us are small business owners. No. We don't have a team like Gary V can be on every platform because he have hun he, he has hundreds of people that can post for him. They can reply to comments that can edit content for you. It's probably you and maybe two other people. If you have a mass, a big team for small business right now. So choose two. You don't have to be on all five or six choose two. That could be Pinterest and Instagram. It could be um, Facebook and LinkedIn. Just choose two so you don't overwhelm yourself. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. The Gary V minions out there. Uh, I love Gary V. I've had a chance to talk on a couple uh, events with him before. Met him a couple times. And I always, I always laugh because I'm like, dude, you've got like this whole team falling behind you like a Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez is like video every place he's going. And then Gary V is going everywhere. And I'm like, listen, relax, everybody. You, like you said, share something. I actually had to turn off Gary V. I used to watch the Ask Gary V show all the time. I was like, I'm wasting an hour of every day listening to Gary talk. And I should be spending that hour on my business. And what he talked for an hour, I could have got all my marketing done for almost a week for the most part, right? Right. It works that way. Um, and what I love about focusing on two platforms is now you can really dive into what content works on those platforms. Mm -hmm. Because like the content that thrives really well on Instagram only works on LinkedIn, but it's not going to work that well on Facebook. Right. Like a carousel post, for example, I posted that on Instagram. It did really well. I posted on LinkedIn and I got like five messages, made a couple thousand dollars. I post that on Facebook and people would just scroll right past it. So it's like, those are the things you need to know for your business before you even make a social account. You need to know if this is the right platform and if you have the right content strategy as well. Yeah. Now for those that don't know what a carousel post is, that's where you're posting multiple photos that people will slide to the left or the right to look at. It's kind of a, a great thing to tell, tell stories on LinkedIn. Gary Vee used that with his cartoons. Yeah. And it works really well with, I think, up to 10 photos, 10 images on Instagram. Now, Facebook, you can still put a carousel, but you're right. It's not as engaging as video has become on Facebook or uh, single images for the most part. And as a pro tip to everybody listening, because I messed this up too, when you post a carousel on LinkedIn, it's supposed to be in PDF format. So you have to combine all the images to one PDF file and then post it as a file to LinkedIn. So that's something that will really frustrate you if you don't know it. So I want to put that tip out there. That is good to know. I did not know that. Ding, 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 everybody learning it here, okay? <laughs> good stuff out there. Actually, we should do this. That's a money, the money tip there for everybody out there. So let's let's dive back into a little bit on here so knowing where they're at knowing obviously who they're at what would you say is too much as far as marketing or just enough compared to some people that post on a regular basis some people that just do it every once in a while or actually i'll, I'll give you a little bit of a tip here we with our different events that we have we have an online event called note camp chris and this will drive you bonkers so we survey the audience and roughly about 30% of our attendees always end up filling out the survey. And half of those that fill out their survey, when I ask them how often they market, you know, once a day, once a week, once a month, once never, over half say, what's never? I've never mar marketed to my email database or to my database online. Oh, man. See, I, I, look, at, I look at marketing this way. What I've learned is, you know, somebody like Gary V will tell you to create a hundred pieces of content, but that's just not realistic if you don't have a big team. We established that. What's more efficient is to plan your content to where you can post at least twice per day. You're on two platforms, which means you can post twice per day. So for me, my marketing strategy includes planning my content on Thursday. I will, and this is always for the week ahead. So plan Thursday, I will write descriptions uh, um, and make my thumbnails on Friday. And then on Saturday, I do all my video recording and everything. Sunday, I do editing and scheduling. So what's beautiful about this is once you start this rhythm and you're only doing two pieces of content, so it doesn't take you 10 hours, you know, an hour each of those days, that's four hours in a week. You can make some amazing content. 
And what will happen is you'll start to get a rhythm where you're two weeks ahead and then three weeks ahead. And now you can plan out a month of content because you have such a great system set up. So two pieces of content per day on your two main platforms is more than enough content. That's, that's really does make a lot of sense there. Now that's a total of what, uh, 14 pieces of, of individual things. If you're doing seven days there, um, you know, it depend on where you're at. Like I don't, I don't usually post a lot in the weekend because most people aren't on LinkedIn on Saturday and Sunday for the most yep. part. So that narrows it down a little bit for those out there, but people are always like, what do I'm not that interesting to talk about. And I'm like, listen, the good Lord has given you already things at least once a month to talk about. All right. A, and I always tell them kind of this, the force up for me. Like if you're, I'm a big believer in the jab, 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 right hook thing, three pieces of content before you ask for something. So give yeah. to your audience. Would you, agree, would you agree to that coach Chris? Yeah, I 100% agree. Okay. So like with that people like, look at the week, what's going on with the week in every month, there is a holiday to talk about. That's one piece of content, right? Uh, second thing I tell a lot of our real estate investors across the country are going to local real estate club meetings where they were pre COVID or they're doing virtual stuff on here. So I'm always like, that's a second piece of content. You could talk about the meeting, either what you're going to go learn or your opinion of the meeting afterwards. All right. And then third could be something that you're doing for fun or a past deal or a past story or a piece of property you're evaluating or something you're learning. And then the fourth thing could just be something fun. What your family did, something goofy, right? Yeah, and I have the same kind of rhythm set up where um, I do viral content. You know, when something is popular in my industry, I like to talk about it. Like when Joe Rogan got his deal with Spotify, that's viral content. Um, and then I do storytelling. I like to teach once a week. And then I like to do two videos, you know, um, and that right there is more than enough. And th the thing with content is it's not even about having amazing, amazing content in the beginning, because until you start posting it, you don't know what's good. You don't know right. what's going to do good, but you have to get going and just be consistent with it. Because if you post two times a day for at least two weeks straight, that's 10 days of posting content in a month. You'll start to see a total different response when you post things and you, you know, you get messages to people sign up to your mailing list, getting on calls with you. Like I don't wait till people get on my mailing list to nurture them. I nurture them while they're on my timeline or I'm on their feed. So when we do get on the phone, we can go straight to converting. I don't want to waste time telling you my story. You saw it in a video last week. Right. So that's why that strategy works. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing because you, if you're marketing on a regular basis, people are already going to know about you. Like I had a, a conversation with a guy who saw something on LinkedIn. He called me and said, oh, I see you're very passionate about dogs or animals. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you, you could get that. I guess you could figure out talking about that. But that was just a little thing. I, somebody pulled out of the, the, the wazoo, you know, out of left field that I had. And I was like, oh, this guy's really listening to what we're, we're doing. So it makes, makes the conversion a whole lot easier, like you say, in a, in a variety of fashions with what we're doing at the conversion with if people or investors are looking to invest or they're looking for deal flow, they see that you're doing, they've already, you've already built rapport or they wouldn't be picking up the phone or messaging you because they already have seen what you're doing. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And if I were a real estate agent or if I wanted to buy and sell houses, if I want to flip houses, I would definitely be focused on building my brand within the community. Like I would be creating content around my community. You know, if you record videos, go to your favorite restaurant locally and record a video there. Just if you start off the video, just showing a logo or um, the uh, brand outside the building, you know, something that simple can bring in your audience to where they're more aware of who you are because brand awareness, that's how it starts. You know, it's just getting people to see you and hear your voice and see your logo consistently. So again, that the real test I always tell my clients is two weeks. Can you give me two weeks of consistent content? And just, just so nobody has excuses, I'll give you five different content styles. You have the carousel post. You can pay somebody on Fiverr or do them yourself on link, uh, uh, Canva. Canva is really easy. You can do graphics, podcast episodes, videos, and articles. Those are five things that I do to make sure I'm making at least five figures a month in my business. Five days a week, I'm posting content. That rhythm, that simple. Very, very simple. And the videos, do they got to be an hour, two hours long, or four hours like Tim Ferriss does? <laughs> no, man. No, please, no. I mean, if you record that long, I don't think too many people are going to watch that. <laughs> no, your click-through ratio or your, your like ratio may be very, very low on the percentage recorded there. But, you know, we're, you, you said something really good about stories, videos, wherever you're eating at, or if you're in front of a new property, 
giving a property tour or doing a rehab or um, articles. You could literally do a video about an article. And a lot of these, you know, like there's different websites that we go to all the time, like DS News is a big website, housingwire.com, even LinkedIn has started posting relevant articles that will be I will use to share and then put my own spin on it. And that works out really easy to do that. It right? works so well. Um, that's one of the, my pro tips that I, I do on Instagram and LinkedIn. You can do this where you follow hashtags and Twitter has it now. You can follow topics and you want to get um, a subscribe to at least five newsletters in your niche. So for me, it's podcasting. Every morning I'm getting news about podcasting. Some days you'd be like, man, why am I receiving this email? But other days you'd be thankful for it because when something big happens in your market, you're immediately aware of it. So if something happens in a housing market, you want to know when it happens. You don't want to wait till normal people know, like you're supposed to be the expert here, right? So you have to be kind of what we call up on game. So those newsletters are going to really help you out. Mm, I love that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to prime the uh, proverbial creative juices if you don't know what the heck you're talking about. You know, it's a, uh, or don't know what to talk about, go to a newsletter and you'll be able to find something there. Go to USA Today and look at the housing or, or money. It's one of the places that we go to on a regular basis. Now, I kind of want to bring it, let's take it back. Let's take it back a little bit here because we know people are out there struggling a little bit and you've done a good job building your brand. But let's talk about the day after your apocalypse, okay? But the <laughs> week after the quintuple negative day or negative week there for you. As because so many people, and I only say this because we know people are facing job loss, they're facing evictions, they're in forbearance agreements out there, and they've had this six month window for forbearance, and they may have another six months of working from home or being delayed. What are some of the initial things that you did that were seeds that you planted that you kind of hey helped you kind of get that momentum going? We know you didn't go from zero to sixty overnight or zero to where you're at today. It's a process, right? It's like Damon John says, I was an overnight success that took eight years to make happen. You know what I mean? So what if you can think back to some of the things that were the most powerful thing that you saw the, the best kind of uh, traction when you were struggling at, because that's not a good time. Look, look, I've been almost evicted before. I've had my car, a car repoed in the past. I've faced foreclosure. We're humble. I, I think, we're, I think we're, we're, we're brothers from another mother when it comes to dealing with difficulties <laughs> there, right, Chris? But yeah, you think it, back to when you kind of got started rock and rolling, what are some things that were the easiest things that you, you did back then that may still apply today or what you would you recommend for people to do today? Uh, man, I did. Um, I had to go back even further to what I did before. Before that situation happened, I had kind of a similar situation, but it was a lot longer. Um, years before that, I was in San Diego. I was trying to go to junior college. I was fresh out of high school. I was actually dropped out of high school. I went back to get my, my diploma late. So I went to junior colleges everywhere because I was still playing basketball at the time, moving around a lot, just had no real direction. Um, so at that point in time in my life, I, I was when I lived in my car for six months and I used to like park wherever I could, you know, um, and I would like sneak in the grocery store and steal food to eat. You know, if I got caught, then I wouldn't eat dinner that night. And I would try to sleep in LA Fitness, 24-hour fitness sometimes. That's where I would shower at. Um, so I had been through tough times before, so I knew this wasn't going to be bad. The first thing I did was I created a great routine. And what I mean by that is I love to do this thing where I take a card and I write down what I want on this card, three things I want to happen within the next month. And I call those milestones, three things I want to happen in this month, write it on the card, read it every morning, every night, and throughout the day when I get frustrated or exhausted or upset. And that's something that helped me kind of right the ship and get on the right path. Um, and I was actually around the time I started working with Steve Stewart too. Um, that's why I show so much love to Steve, man. Cause when I was down and out, man, <laughs> Steve gave me a job. He's like, look, man, you're a podcaster. I'm going to teach you how to edit and then I'll start sending you jobs. So that's kind of what helped me get into the podcast world. But routines I think can really save your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree that I was talking with somebody today who's a new entrepreneur and they're like, I get, I just drift. I don't get much stuff done. I'm like, well, it's because you don't have your routines down on a daily basis. You got to pick your big rocks or as you say on your card, your three big milestones you want to accomplish and look at them and ingrain it. Cause if you can see that in front of you, it's really kind of your compass to, 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 to true North of where you need to be headed. Right. Yeah. Because whatever we think about is going to consistently grow. And I, always, I love to use this example. It's like when you get up in the morning, 
let's say you step on your kid's toy because it's on the side of the bed. That's a triggering moment because if you get frustrated, you can go this way with your entire day. But if you just say, oh, it's not a big deal. My foot is not bleeding. I'm not going to die. I'll be okay. You can go this way where you'd be happy all day. Most people go this way where they're frustrated. Then they go to the bathroom and they're upset about something else. When they leave the house, they're upset about traffic. When they get to the office, they're upset about something else. So then they spend their whole day being mad and upset. So you can never really be efficient. You can't get into a creative, productive, efficient space if you're always angry and upset. Um, and reading that card is something that can always bring you back in. So if you step on that toy, you're like, wow, my foot is hurting. You should be able to look right over to your nightstand and see the car sitting right there. And that's a reminder because once you do it for about a week, it starts to become second nature. Like you don't have to even read it anymore. You're like, okay, this is what it is for the month. And you just memorize it and it becomes a great habit. Mm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense there because we, we, our brain is our biggest muscle that we really do program um, how our day can go and what we listen to and how we hear, whether it's negative comments from our friends or families or even negativity on social media where we read into that all that crap out there because it's a let's just face it a lot of the just general post the news is not positive by any means and it feeds to a lot of this negativity out there and it's it's really easy for people to give up on a day at five minutes in the morning when they step on that lego piece right yeah <laughs> and, and, and it happens to a lot of us and with entrepreneurs it's even more dangerous because we don't have the normal structure of an employee. Mm -hmm. Like the employee knows if I have attitude today at work or not, I'm going to get paid for being at work as an entrepreneur. If you're selling all day, like if you have houses to sell and you have an attitude, you're probably not going to sell those houses. So having an attitude for an entrepreneur is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be Debbie Downer out there for you for the most part, for sure. Because, and that's the thing. I'm a, I'm a big believer in my office. We have a 30 second bitch session. If something goes wrong, bitch about it for 30 seconds and then move the F on to something else. Cause if we let that stuff drag on, it does drag down other clients, your reactions, your marketing. If you're posting, if you're typing an email, eh, we know that can yeah. go really, <laughs> really fast. Never write an angry email. Wait 24 oh, hours. Man. It's a whole lot better <laughs> in the long run. I've done that's why I'm laughing I've done that before man and it's not a it's not a good thing to read later on you're like I said that Oof. you mean I should have typed said chill the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> we can joke about it now because we've learned yeah. but there's a lot of people that dive into that you know that uh, Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole they they, 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 they deal deep dive it's hard to pull their ass back out of there to get back on the right track and if you you know, if you've got to pay to, to feed, put food on your, your table and your family and your breadwinner, you've got to learn to develop these habits or these milestones. And you've done something really cool that I'm really excited uh, for our audience to learn more about. You want to share a little about some of your new milestone systems and stuff like that that's helped you that you've developed, obviously, but helped a ton of your clients out there too reach amazing goals. Yeah, so the milestone system, what I love about it is it's not this one size fits all thing. You know, it's not where you have to do it this way. Um, what's most important is I want you to think of every year as a new mountain to climb. Because every year you have new goals, you got new things you want to focus on. Now, the old strategy was let's have our New Year's resolution. Let's break that down. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, people have been doing that for hundreds of years. It hasn't worked. Time to switch it up, right? Yeah. So what we do now is called planting the flag. So you have a mountain to climb for this new year. And when you plant that flag at the top of the mountain, that encompasses all of your smaller goals into one bigger goal. That means if you want to lose weight, you want to work out, you want to uh, get in the gym more, you want to eat better. That just means you want to live a healthy lifestyle. That's the flag you're planting at the top of the mountain is to live a healthier lifestyle. If you want to make a million dollars, that's going to encompass build your mailing list, write your book, uh, convert more leads, right? All those smaller goals are actually the milestones. So what I love about planting a flag is it allows you to focus on the smaller stuff in front of it instead of just staring at the top of the mountain. With the New Year's resolution, people will be like, yeah, so this year I'm going to eat better. And they just think about what all the things they cannot eat. Instead of thinking, well, I want to eat healthier. So what can I eat? You know, so staring at the top of the mountain at the New Year's resolution is what people used to do. 
but the milestones are kind of those kind of ledges along the way to help you climb the mountain because all those tasks have to be accomplished for you to reach the top. I love it. It's not something like, oh, I'm going to go free, free base and call, uh, climb up Everest by myself, <laughs> which is what a lot of people, you're, you, you paint that picture really good. Those that climb Everest do it over like a couple of weeks and they have different base camps. They go up a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And they celebrate those wins. I think as entrepreneurs, we're hit it out of the park or nothing a lot of times. We don't celebrate those little victories along the way. We need to and identify that it is really part more of a journey versus, hey, you either you're not, you're not striking out and you're done. It's a, it's a path, especially a year-long path. Or in this case, you know, it's a big shit sandwich. We all got to take a bite out of a lot of New Year's resolutions went out the way when they got stuck at home, you know, they're the COVID, the COVID 30 versus the freshman 15 for a lot of people. Yeah. And I actually have a chapter uh, in the milestone system in the book about rewards, because every time you accomplish, you reach a milestone, you should have a reward to match that accomplishment. Obviously, if you know, you outlined your book, you shouldn't go and take a 10 day vacation in Bali. That doesn't match up. But if you like that, that's some people take it too far with celebrations, you know, <laughs> but if you outline your book, let's say you took the night off, you took the weekend off or something that kind of matches. And like you said, the rewards are so important because there's a mental side to that. You know, as you reward yourself, you're telling your brain, okay, we did a good job today, this week, this month, we had a really good month. So what we did last month, let's celebrate that. Be happy so we can do it again later. Whereas, like you said, if it's all or nothing, and then you, because you, because you didn't reach the major goal immediately, you can't quit and say, I didn't do anything because you still put in a lot of work. So you have to stop being so hard on yourself. That helps nobody. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you take the big goal and break it down to smaller milestones? How do you put those milestones in place? Because I think that's where a lot of people struggle is they think the big goal, but they don't take the time to really kind of reverse engineer what they need to be doing on a weekly or monthly basis and what those goals have to be to hit that big goal? That's when you can do a few things. I always say the first thing you should do is research and find that person that has done what you want to do. Like for me, when I look at some people like Tony Robbins, I'm like, okay, what does Tony Robbins do so that he is Tony Robbins? Like, what did he do? And so, okay, he's on stage speaking a lot. So one of my milestones this year was to be on stage speaking at least 10 times. And I kid you not, in January, I set that goal of 10 and by March, I had surpassed it. Like this, this year has been crazy for me personally. Um, and so when you look at someone else and you see what they did to be successful, you can model yourself after that. And sometimes you literally can reach out and ask those people. Some of my best podcast guests have come because I just ask people like, hey, how did you do this? Like, how did you make this happen? Literally in a DM on Instagram or LinkedIn. And they're just like, I did this and I did this. I'm like, yeah, you should come to my show and talk about that. <laughs> and an interview comes, it really turns into a coaching session for me. So that's, I, 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 I hate to veer off the path, but that's why everybody should have a podcast. Because <laughs> <laughs> It's your own personal, um, oh, it's your own personal coaching aspect of things. I mean, that's the thing is that some of the greatest people I've had on my show have been people that I've wanted to hear more about what they're doing and understand it and taking what they went through and then applying it or their systems or their teachings to my business, help me get taken to that next level. And that's the beautiful thing about so much videos, many podcasts out there. You can really dive into it and really build a, a, a great network of virtual learning, whereas you didn't have to do it. Like you, it was very much more difficult to do it before, right, Chris? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and when it comes to the milestones, I always tell people after you plant a flag, you know what you really want, that's what you're focused on, break it down to where at the very least you have one major milestone a month, uh, but you don't want to have it to where you have like 18 milestones because then you're going too small, mm -hmm. right? So as an example, if you're uh, major goal for the year is to live a healthier lifestyle. That means one milestone will be to find a trainer. And then it could be to get some workout equipment. It could be to get out, get workout gear, get workout clothes, right? So those are the kind of milestones that you take along the way. You can really celebrate yourself because if your goal is to live a healthier lifestyle and that's at the top and one day you find a trainer and then you get clothes and then you find a gym and then you get equipment then you get routines now you're moving all the way up the ladder. You feel amazing when you make that kind of progress. But I think the most important part of this is actually documenting that progress. Like you have to actually write it down. Just thinking it is not enough. That's, that's not good enough. 
No, that and that's the power in goal setting and the original milestones is you're what 50 percent more likely to accomplish it because you did write it down right yeah exactly and with the milestones it's a whole system where you break it down that's why i created the milestone planner um, because you can break it down to where every day you're giving energy to creating that life that you want like literally every day for the past six years now i've only focused on creating life that i want every single day like i can't go to sleep without writing in that planner I, I, it's been nights I was like pass out drunk and I get up like hold on wait I didn't write in my planner yet and I go straight to it I kid you not I only missed one day when I was hospitalized that was it other than that <laughs> I can't miss a day it's just oh, it's oh, a habit <laughs> hopefully it's not from your drinking habits that you're hospitalized <laughs> that, we got a serious problem to talk about Chris you know we might know the answer why you're homeless and live in your car for six months <laughs> you're dealing with that. and I would really love to see what you, how you read it the next day after you woke up from writing after we passed out. I wrote what? <laughs> I'm tell, it's just, it's, it's one of the best habits you can have because it, it really teaches you how to reward yourself, but also be disciplined. Like you couldn't host a show this great if you were not disciplined. The average podcaster, you know, honestly, they're not successful because of discipline, not skill or strategy, because all that stuff you can learn. But discipline, that's something you have to have and develop on your own. Yeah, I would say that that's definitely, with this being episode 620, we've been pretty disciplined in cranking out episodes on a regular basis. And, um, you know, we have gone from doing it daily to a couple times a week just because it does get a lot of stuff. But still, cranking it out and showing up, you get better because you just hang around a lot of times. And um, we branded ourselves as being the, the blowtorch in our niche because nobody's even close to where we're at because we just keep cranking and cranking and cranking, you know? And that's, yeah, and, and that's, that's what it takes. <laughs> yeah, and, and the work ethic, I think, is where a lot of people don't expect that you actually have to work at what you want to accomplish. It just doesn't write it. Thinking about it and writing it down doesn't accomplish that, right? You still got to put the work in, right, Chris? And even when it comes to putting the work in, one thing I'm learning this year, like I'm learning just today before this interview, like when it comes to working, you got to find what you love. I know some people say you shouldn't do what you love and all that stuff, but when you can live in that space of doing what you love and get paid for it, that is the ultimate personal branding for me. Because I, I remember the days when I literally, I used to look at PodFest, podcast movement, posting about their events and stuff. I'm like, wow, I want to speak there one day. And this year I've been at more podcast events than I can count. And it's just like, when you find something you love to do, like I got, this is how much I love podcasting. I got a job offer and I'm like, I will be excited to work there. And it's like, as an entrepreneur, after you get out of full time, you're like, I don't want to work for anybody else. But if it's something you love, you'll be willing to compromise that. So I think going back to that childlike passion, that excited energy that we have in us, when you can really connect with that again, it can change your life forever. Amen to that, brother. I totally agree to that. Now, you've talked about your milestone system a little bit here with some of the questions. Let's dive into that and share with our audience really what that is and what it all encompasses for those. Because I know a lot of people out there are looking for some sort of guidance they're looking for help on their day in day. God knows that 2020 has been a bit, like we said, a shit show. And a lot of things have been rescheduled and pivoted and figure things out. And people are lost out there. I mean, I talk to a lot of people. They're like, I don't know where to really begin or where to go. And that's why when you, you uh, reached out to me a couple of weeks, I was like, this is perfect. Because I'm hearing from my audience, this is something that a lot of people need. So share, share what the milestone system is and kind of what it all encompasses there, Chris. Yeah, so uh, again, the milestone system is about creating life you desire. And when you get the milestone planner, it shows you really how to use this system every day and focus on what you want and give that energy consistently. This means whatever your, the life is that you want to make, not what I want you to have with your mom or your friends, whatever life you want, you can design that using the milestone system. So uh, another part of it that is a game changer is the monthly review and preview system. So in that planner, I, you know, I've heard a lot of people tell me that this month was terrible for me or this year was bad. And I'm always like, you had a great year though. You made more money than you ever have. You were happier, but because they had a bad December, they blame the entire year. They say it was bad. It's not true. So what we do is we like to break it down and analyze it at a deeper level. So every day you're, 
tracking all your tasks that you're doing to work towards that milestone for the month. End of the month, you review and say, okay, I actually made progress towards this milestone. I reached this one. Then that's when you can celebrate for your month, right? Then you do a preview. You set yourself up to be successful next month. And what this is doing is adding more structure to create a life that you want. Like you, at the beginning of the year, you break down, this is what I want. The, these are the steps I need to take to get there. It could be five milestones. It could be 10. And then every day you work towards milestone one. Okay, I got that. Check it off the list. Then milestone two, I got that. Check it off the list. And I don't try to put time on there. I tell people, stay away from that because that's usually a side effect of you comparing your journey to someone else's. Just, oh, they sold 20 houses this month. I only sold two. And it's like, that person has been doing it for 10 years. So you being in your second year, you can't be mad they're selling 20 houses. Focus on you and what you have going on. And that's easier when you have that tracking system. So this helps you kind of take all the things that you desire and you want and structure it up. So every day you're dedicating at least one hour, uh, at least one. If you can give it one hour, I can guarantee you in 90 days, you will have a completely different life. Now, how do people uh, take advantage of this or get signed up for it, Chris? So what you can do is go to Twitter or Instagram. Send me a message, the coach Chris underscore. Send me a message. I like to get to know people, man. Send me a message. And if you're a podcaster, send me an episode. If you are just in real estate, you have your own business, let me know who you are, what you do. I'm a real personable person. I love talking to people. You know, just talk to me. That's it. And I will send you the book. I will send you all the information, all that stuff. Just reach out to me. I prefer to do that than the regular website stuff. It's just more personal like this. I'm not going to put you in some annoying funnel and email you every day. That's not, that's not me. Just message me. Honestly, you'll get more value from Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and all that stuff from me anyway. So shoot me a message. That'll be way better. We'll make sure and put the links into that in the description below on the YouTube description or Facebook along with posting it also on the podcast uh, uh, blog when it comes out for the episode here for you on the website there, guys and gals out there. But that's the, that's the beautiful thing. You, 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 when you were saying, hey, spend an hour, focus on 30 days, what popped in my head was my days as a banker. My bank is my days as a financial advisor because every you know, mortgage broker, mortgage banker, b banker, financial advisor, they usually run in 30 to 90 day segments to get to their year end goal. And they have 30 you know, monthly commitments of what to do. When I, uh, when the best sales trainers I've ever had, I always focus on, okay, figure out what, you know, start off the day or end your day with knowing what you've got to accomplish the next day. So that when you walk in or you're sleeping at night, especially if you're laying down or drunk and passed out, you know what you're <laughs> going to talk about. I'm just joking. Chris is not an alcoholic. We know that. Okay, everybody. <laughs> we all like to have a little bit. What is your, what's your beverage of choice there, buddy, while we get sidetracked here? <laughs> Honestly, man, I, I love red wine. Wine, red wine is my thing. Wine, Cabernet, I, I, Merlot, uh, you know. Uh, I love Cabernet. Meatball. I love Cabernet, but if it's a big event, I, I got to have some champagne. That, that's oh, my thing. There we go. There you go. You have a favorite, favorite cab? I, I don't. I'm always trying different ones. I do have some favorites, but I can't remember the name of them. I'm, <laughs> when I thought about it, I'm drinking it, man. I, I love it. Go. That's just, that's one of my ways of celebrating. And I think we all should have our own ways of celebrating. You know, that that's it for me. Um, I know other people, they want to go out and party. I'm not a party person. Plus with COVID, I don't know how people are partying right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Well, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're structuring protests and they're treating it as a party. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Get it. <laughs> Hold other thing. But we had we had Steph and I had a glass of Cabernet last night with Duck Corn Vineyard out of Napa, which is really good. Duck Corn Cabernet, really good out there. My favorite Cabernet is a Jordan Cabernet, like 1995. It's a little expensive, but oh my gosh, it will slap your mama with flavor. But mm. <laughs> I'm not the same. You meat alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I got enough wine here in the house. I'm good for the whole pandemic. But anyway, <laughs> you, you when but going back to what I was saying, where I got sidetracked there. You know, we looked at 30 days in increments and then we had to track what we did on a daily basis. And I think that's one of the best things when you're new as an entrepreneur, track your daily habits. You'll see what you're working well towards, what you're flipping, you know, what you're drifting on. A, a great book to read, Outwitting the Devil, if you haven't read it by Sharon Lecter, Napoleon Hill. But take, it, take advantage of what Chris is talking about here, ladies and gentlemen, that you're listening out here. Reach out to him, get his milestone planner. It is phenomenal. 
It's he's done a great job of putting this together. He's worked with so many different types of entrepreneurs, just not podcasters, ladies and gentlemen. There, but you can learn a lot from an expert because the systems, the day in day out routines are often similar across the board for those that are experts or successful in any category is that they let their data find them and they also do the most productive thing at any given moment for the most part. And this is a great way to help you identify the most productive things on your journey, on your path to climbing that Mount Everest, Mount Everest, get that ultimate goal, right, Chris? Yeah, man, it's just about being efficient. Um, new entrepreneurs love to tell me, man, I work for 18 hours a day. And I'm like, that sounds good, but honestly, it doesn't even sound good. It sounds unhealthy. Um, that's actually how I ended up hospitalized because I almost suffered a brain aneurysm because I was overworking. So that's when I was like, okay, I need to take a step back. And I had to reevaluate how I'm spending my days, how efficient I am. So now another thing I talk about in the book is power hours. I can sit down for one hour and I work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break, 25 minutes, take another five minute break. That one hour, I'm more efficient than three hours of being all over the place. So when you're efficient as an entrepreneur, you actually can get a lot done in a very short period of time. And I think that's what we need to get to. Instead of working 18 hours, let's work four focused hours. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense because the brain can only absorb, uh, absorb what the ass can withstand. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So when people tell me I stay up until three in the morning, it's like, I mean, but are you actually working? Are you that efficient? You know, three in the morning, I know for me, I have to stop working now. One of my rules, I stop work at 10 p.m. If I'm doing something really important, I go to 11. If I have to get it done, I miss the deadline, midnight. I'm never working past midnight under any circumstance. Because I know when I'm working that late, I have YouTube over here and Netflix over here and I'm eating and I'm just not actually getting work done. So I'd rather go to sleep and wake up early at 6 a.m. and get to work because I'm more efficient then. And then some people are night owls. I think uh, you, we mentioned Tony Robbins. Uh, he mentioned that he's a night owl. Sometimes he doesn't go to bed till two or three in the morning because that's when he has his most productive time. He's a little bit of a later sleeper. Whatever the schedule is, whatever the schedule is, but you said something really there. Sh short 30 minutes, 25 minute blasts or be effective. Turn off all the distractions. You can off, if you're waking up at six, you can get m more stuff done by 10 o'clock than most people get done in a week if you're just doing that when the house is quiet especially if you got little ones in the house that you're dodging Legos when you're getting up in the morning, huh, Chris? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to wake up before the house. That's my favorite thing in the world. It's like the world kind of stops between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. After 7, it can get a little loud, but you get up at 5 a.m., you just get a head start on everything. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do that helps me charge and center my day is I'll get up in the morning, grab a cup of coffee, and I go out and sit out my patio, and I listen. It's... Yeah, you know, I'm on the, um, my, sh is on the uh, west side of the house, so the sun's not coming on me yet in the 90 to 5 degree heat that we have here in Austin, but I'm sitting there, sun's out, I'm listening to the birds, I'm listening to the different things, we got frogs, we got a, a couple crazy squirrels, listening to the city, you know, listening to the neighborhood kind of come alive and just centering there, I'll throw Tony, Robin Tony Robbins in my ear, uh, somebody else motivational or just a little bit of light music, and it's just a <sighs> great centering yeah. day to focus on my milestones to make things happen for the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, exactly, man. That's super healthy. I do the same thing. And one thing I want to urge people to stop doing is stop using alarm clocks because that's actually scaring your body awake. Yeah. It's better if you wake up on your own. Just tell yourself, we have to wake up at 7 a.m. tomorrow or 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. And then let your body wake up. It'll take some time to get used to it, but after about a month, you won't need an alarm anymore. I promise you. That's probably one of my favorite th the habits I've developed because alarms are just annoying. Nobody wants to hear that, man. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. If you go on any major trip, you're usually waking up 10 minutes before the alarm clock goes off. You know, you, we see that. I wake up, roll over, up. I got two minutes before my alarm. I'm supposed to go off, click, let me get out of the house and, and go do it. But it just builds. It, you got to realize, I think we have to give ourself, ourselves out there permission to fail permission to grow into this stuff. It's not going to happen overnight. That's why I love, that's why I have you on here because you've put together the accountability, the pathway, and the milestone planner is one of the best things I've seen out there, Chris. So I'm, I'm really glad that you've been on the podcast today. And uh, what's, the, what's, what's the best social handle? I know you mentioned a couple there, but best social handle, just to repeat for the heck of it for everybody out there tonight. At the coach Chris underscore the coach Chris underscore Instagram, Twitter. If you search for uh, LinkedIn.com slash in 
the coach Chris. You'll find me there as well. Um, I'm on Facebook too. The page somebody stole my other name, so it's the expert coach Chris on Facebook. So <laughs> just shoot me a message, man. I'm I'm here to answer everybody. Awesome, man. Well, man, thank you so much for coming on the Knuckles. Just sharing it. I've really had a great time visiting with you, buddy. You know, it's been fun. We're gonna be uh, can't wait to catch up and hang out in person. Have a good glass of red wine at some point, huh? For sure, man. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. All right, guys and gals, that's going to wrap it up. Take what Chris said here, what Coach Chris said. Go out, take some action, put some things down. Be kind to your future self and take your goals and plan them appropriately in your 30 days increments and then taking the time to focus a day on your, 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 your big goals. Because if you can't spend an hour on your goals each day, is it really an important goal? And we all know that the important ones are you're going to spend the time on and you have success and succeed at what you focus on. So go out, focus on everybody, and we will see you at the top.